much further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. Here Paul the Apostle again asking the Hebrew Christians and he said, if perfection were to come by the Levitical priesthood, by the law of Moses, how then will he give us another priest after the order of Melchizedek? Look at verse 19. In verse 19, for the law made nothing perfect. And the law made no one perfect. Made nothing perfect. It is faith that perfects his righteousness in us. Going back to the law is going to punish yourself unnecessarily and is going to bring you under yoke unnecessarily because the law cannot perfect you. If you are here, and you say, well, I've been here now for some months and some years, and I don't like this in my life. I don't like this in my life. If you are not perfected, where you are hearing of faith, it's not the fault of the faith. It's your fault. You are not taking it to heart. You are not looking at Christ. The way you ought to look at Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith, and going to the place where you have tradition and ceremony and circumcision and uh, rituals and all that, it will worsen your situation. You'll be totally uh, emptied of strength and grace and power because perfection does not come from outside Christ. Verse 19, it says, For the law make nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which withdraw nigh unto God. I pray Christ will perfect you. The Lord himself will perfect you. You know, in yourself, in your own power, you cannot perfect yourself. And they not knew that. And the Lord is not pushing you away from that. He says, come. You could not perfect yourself. The law cannot perfect you. That's why I canceled the first covenant, the old covenant. I've established the new covenant now. Come. You will perfect everything concerning your life. Look at Second Chronicles chapter 25, verse 2. Second Chronicles chapter 25, verse 2. Look at something here. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. That's where some people stop. They say, I'm all right. I'm doing everything. I have the courage. I have the constitution. I have the stamina. I have the stability, I have the strength to do everything that is right. Reach everything. It says, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. You see, you have to come back to Christ. He is the one that will take you beyond where you are now and then he'll make you to do it with a perfect heart. Look at this man, verse 14. In verse 14, now it came to pass. After that Amaziah, that the man was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods, the idols, of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods. This is the man, he did things right, but not with a perfect heart. And he thought it was self sufficient, a self made man, a self righteous man, a self developed man. A do-it-yourself man. But then his heart had not been perfected. And so he went to battle. 
you overcame in that battle and now he came back to the gods of the people and he bowed down himself before them and turned and burnt incense unto them look at verse 15 in verse 15 therefore the anger of the lord was kindled against Amaziah and he sent unto him a prophet which said unto him that why hast thou sought after the gods of the people which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand verse 16 in verse 16 and it, and it came to pass as he talked with him that the king Amaziah said unto him are thou made of the king's counsel forbear why shouldest thou be smitten then the prophet forbear and said I know that God has determined to destroy thee because thou hast done this and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. There are people that have initial grace of God. They are saved and they do that which is right. But their hearts are not perfected yet. And instead of going to God and being perfected, they are running here and there, no more prayer, no more reading of the Bible, no quiet time, no intimacy with God, no asking the Lord and waiting on the Lord day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, no renewal and they're just like that and they walk and walk and walk and the grace of God is not increasing, multiplying in their lives. They're satisfied and then if they take any wrong step and you're saying and the Lord sends a prophet, a counselor, a leader to them, why are you doing this? They say, do I need your counsel? Do I need your advice? And do I need any scripture again? I want to tell you, I'm saved, I'm saved. That's what Amaziah did. But the Lord is saying that we come to Christ for perfection. Whatever the Lord has done in our lives, so far, so good. But we come back to him for perfection. If we're saved, we come back for sanctification. And if we're already sanctified, we come back for the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. The Lord Jesus Christ knew what he was saying when he said, Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be a deal with power from on high. He knew they were saved. Their names were written in heaven. He knew they were sanctified. He prayed for them, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He knew that they were to preach the gospel. He said, as my father have sent me, even so have I sent you. And yet he said, tarry, wait in the city of Jerusalem, even though you are saved, even though you are sanctified, until ye be endued with power from on high. It says, for ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He wants us to come back and come back and come back. He has filled us. He wants to refill us. He has formed us. He wants to form us into newer creatures again. He has fulfilled his promises in our lives. He wants to fulfill more promises in our lives. Don't be self-sufficient and think i know it all i've got it all i pray that the lord will perfect what he has started in our lives in jesus name did i hear any amen there
Look at number two now. Number two, the imputed righteousness from the Lord. We're coming back to Galatians chapter 3 from verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. You come to God you submit to God, you yield yourself to God, you open your heart to God, you dedicate yourself to God, you consecrate yourself to God, you lay all on the altar and you believe the Lord that what the Lord has promised he is able to fulfill, is able to take the stony heart out of our flesh is able to give us the heart of flesh is able by his power divine power to give us all things pertaining to life and godliness he is able by his promise and provision to give us the very nature of christ the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world is able to make us peculiar people zealous unto good works is able to impute is able to impart his righteousness into our lives look at romans uh, verse 7 here galatians chapter 3 verse 7 it tells us know ye therefore that they which are of the same of the of faith the same are the children of abraham they are of faith they believe that's why they were converted they believe that's why they consecrate more everything they know everything they have everything they possess unto the lord and they live by faith they walk by faith they live by faith they plan by faith they envision the future by faith everything they do they do by the faith of the son of god who loved them and gave himself unto them it says in romans chapter 4 reading from verse 11 romans chapter 4 verse 11 and he received the sign of circumcision is a seal of the righteousness of faith a seal a token of the righteousness of faith which he had yet being uncircumcised it wasn't the circumcision that brought the faith he had the faith when he was yet uncircumcised that he might be the father of all that believe the father of all that believe and the father so the son so the daughter and as he becomes a father we're able to manifest the same kind of faith that he manifested that he might be the father of all them that believe though they be not circumcised we don't have to go back to the law of moses that righteousness might be imputed unto them also that righteousness might be imputed unto them also that the same righteousness that made Abraham acceptable in the sight of the Lord, that that same righteousness that makes us accepted in the beloved, acceptable in the kingdom, that makes us and assures us that we're children of God, that our names are written in heaven, and that our lives are transformed, that that kind of righteousness approved of God and given by God might be imputed unto us also just by faith it tells us in second corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 21 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 for he hath made him to be seen for us the sin offering the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world he took our sin upon him so that will take his righteousness upon us and exchange we had sin he had righteousness and when he died for us on the cross of calvary we made an exchange as we believed in him 
we transferred all our sins on Christ by faith. He transferred all his righteousness on us by faith. He made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now our sins are taken away and we have his righteousness. And the Father in heaven does not look at us as miserable, wretched, depraved, condemned sinners. He looks at us as justified, saved, ransomed, reconciled, renewed, righteous people of God. Thank God I am one of them. I say thank God I am one of them. As you believe that righteousness is imputed in your life in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 9. It says, and be found in him, not outside him. If you crawl out to tradition, you'll be outside Christ. If you crawl out to the law of Moses, you'll be outside Christ. If you crawl out to the old style of worship, old pattern of worship, the candle, the white garment, the incense, washing and bathing by the riverside, and you abandon the blood of Jesus. If you crawl out and you go to the mountain, you're thinking it's that mountain that will give you what you need in God. If you crawl out into tradition, if you crawl out into occultism, if you crawl out to the power of Satan, you'll be outside Christ. But it is when you remain in him and be found in him, not having uh, my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. We have all things in Christ. I said we have all things in Christ. Righteousness in Christ, redemption in Christ, justification in Christ, sanctification in Christ, power in Christ. And then we have the glory that is to come. We have everything in Christ. Abide in Christ. All will be yours in Jesus' name. Number three here. Number three, the impactful righteousness in uh, our lives. Romans chapter 5 uh, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death range by one, much more they that receive uh, the abundance of grace. Abundance of grace coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. And of the gift of righteousness. Gift it is not something we pay for. It's not something we sweat for. It's not something we labor for. The righteousness coming from God, and he has abundance of that, and he gives that to us as a gift. The gift of righteousness, we shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Gift of righteousness. I say gift of righteousness will make you to reign in life. I will reign in life. Not at death, not after death, in life. In this present life, you will reign. You reign over every obstacle, over every challenge, over every...